joining Brigadier de la Soe Mota, head of the police in Whitbank, close to Johannesburg. She and her team are about to raid five premises. She's not looking for drugs or guns, but beauty products. So we're going inside the shop right now. The Brigadier is looking for someone selling the illegal skin whitening products. I'm Brigadier Mota, the station commander. These products are banned. It's illegal to sell any cream that claims to bleach or lighten your skin. It's like she wasn't aware that she's not supposed to be selling this in the shop. We've just confiscated few, I think six or seven, of these uh, skin lightening creams. Skin bleaching creams are big business. A recent study suggested one in three South African women buy them. Open that store room for us. Open it or we'll break the door open. The fact that you're behind the counter, it means you're fully accountable for what is happening in this shop. They are banned because scientists say if you use them, you risk getting skin cancer and other serious conditions. But the brigadier tells me as soon as the police confiscate the creams, the vendors restock. It is hard to police because these are not South African products, they are imported. So why do you think there's a rise in these skin whitening products? I mean, there's 525 products here from the raid. It is a demand. It is because of a demand that is there. Skin bleaching creams made all over the world are smuggled here. They're an international phenomenon, big in Africa, but also Asia, Europe, and America. Growing up as a dark-skinned Bangladeshi, I felt the social pressures to use them. But I'm surprised their use is on the rise in South Africa, where black people want to struggle for political power. In downtown Johannesburg, the law is openly defied. The illegal creams really are everywhere. Oh my goodness, I'm standing right next to some fruit vendors, and in the middle of it, you just see skin whitening creams. Most of these creams sell for under two pounds. It's being sold in mass. Every block I walk, walk up to is selling this. Why, why are you, I'm on. Okay, we just got kicked out. They're up to no good, so they don't want us here. I've come to a student area to meet someone who's trying to look lighter. This is Jeff, a 19-year-old marketing student. He tells me he's been using skin bleaching creams for two years. And it's worked out for you? Yeah. Uh, let me show you the before. Whoa. That's totally different. It's like a different person. Yeah. What did you not like about this? When I compare myself to now, I feel like I'm more appealing now. Why? Because yeah, I'm lighter. Mm. Yeah. It's Friday and it's party night. So it's the college life. Hey, excuse the mess. This is where... Uh, yeah. Where all the magic happens? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jeff's getting ready for a big evening. Okay, I have a little something I mix every night before I go out the skin. Oh, it's lemon bait. Yeah, and then I just um, mix it all together. He mixes lemon, sunscreen, and lemon bait a cream many South Africans use as a skin lightener, okay. even if its packaging makes no such claim. <sighs> yeah, then I'm good. First saw it in an advert. And then, yeah, I bought it. I started getting lighter and I just continued using it. The lighter the better, I think. Jeff's ready for action. When it comes to the lady. Oh yeah? So how how are you doing? Well tonight I got four numbers so far. Jeff's convinced having lighter skin is the secret to his success. A lot of other young South Africans would agree that it's a plus in the dating game. I want to know why.
I've heard of a singer who's famous in South Africa for transforming the way she looks with skin bleaching products. I'm about to meet with local celebrity Mashoza. She's an icon here in South Africa. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Mashoza. Mashoza is one of the country's biggest female rappers. Mashoza was a township girl who had a smash hit single as a teenager. She then disappeared from the public eye and a new, much lighter Mishosa then reappeared. You have a line missing there. Okay, I tell you what, can we try something? Yeah. Go in there, I'll talk to you. Producer Gabby LaRue and Mishosa are working on a new track. Mishosa's rags to riches story makes her a role model for many young South Africans. And she's as famous for her skin bleaching as for her singing. We agree to meet the next day. See what I mean, so keep it exactly short. I join her at an upmarket spa. We're still going to do the full body scrub, but we're going to start with the facial now. She's getting ready for a photo shoot to endorse a new skin bleaching cream. Mishosa says she uses skin bleaching creams for a medical condition, but accepts that her new look has helped re-energize her career. People saying, when you're dark skinned, you can't find a job. To me, that being sensitive, because I've been through that. I've experienced that. There you go. She admits young South Africans will copy her. I am always on TV, I'm on newspapers. They bound to read and want to be like someone who's on TV. That's part of life. Mishosa's so, PR manager, Kolile, says celebrities need to look lighter. It works better on screen, it works better with makeup, and we're selling an idealistic world out there. In TV, we have to sell a fake world. That's our job. Yeah, which Pearl runs the company that makes the products that Mishosa is going to endorse. This is the most effective of them all. Why? It can take you three to four shades lighter. Right. Yeah, and this can take you three shades lighter, and this can take you one to two shades lighter. Wow, so there's so, different levels yeah, of lightness. Yeah, so it depends on how you want to look or yeah, your goal. Um, what are you going to use on Mishosa today? I think this one. This is the most intense yes. one. Yeah. These creams will sell at 86 pounds each. Mishosa's makeup artist, Kim, describes herself as yellow bone, slang from the American South, meaning light skinned black woman. When you walk in the hall or a club and you're yellow, people notice you. Like, yes, yo, small. yellow bone, yellow bone, yeah, she's light skin, you know what I'm saying? You kind of like, you are more visible to people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And even when you go to interviews and you're slightly fair skinned, yeah. you know, you probably will 50% chance of you getting the job. So right. it's got a huge impact on how people treat you as well. I feel like it'll never really come to an end as long as white is, is labeled as the perfect race, it'll never come to an end. The team get Mishosa ready for the camera and use some of the new cream. How does it feel when you put it on? It stings a little bit, just a little when you put it. But then that basically tells you that it's penetrating the wax. I'm starting to think that the cream is not above board. What did you just put on your hand? Uh, it's a hand cream, it's used for hands and knees, elbows, it's more, you can't use the same thing on the face because it is too much hydroconin, I think. Oh, there's hydroconin in it? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, but it, it, it's just, it's deeper, it's, huh? Hydroquinone penetrates the skin and suppresses the production of the skin pigment, melanin. Scientists have linked it to skin cancer. It's banned, except as a medicine. How do you think young black girls are gonna respond to you promoting? I can't stop them from doing it. It's happened already. They are doing it, they are using products, but they just use products that are not good for them. So with me saying use this, I'm basically saying, if you wanna do it, do it the right way. This is the right product to use. Kinda like, kinda like God lost, cause you're talking too much. Oh my God, we have to run. 
We head to a TV studio where Mushoz is about to perform her new track on live TV. I've been pretty shocked by what I've heard in the spa about the advantages of skin lightening. Mishoza and her entourage take it as a given that being whiter helps you be more successful. I want to know what Mishoza's producer Gabby thinks. He's one of the most experienced men in the music business in South Africa. And you know, there's producers involved like myself, there's record companies involved. And then, of course, the fans, and, and you have to be a certain way and look a certain way in order to fit in. So, an African woman with a lighter skin may be viewed generally as more beautiful. I, I can't see the, really the reason, because they're beautiful either way. Millions will watch. Mishos is an all-singing, all-dancing advertisement for skin bleaching. But I want to know more about its risks. Zinkle Masomi is a hospital cleaner who's come to see Professor Mikosa Delova, a top dermatologist. Zinkle has used illegal skin bleaching creams that contain corticosteroids. They've contributed to this painful condition. Professor Delova did a recent study suggesting 90% of women bleaching their skin didn't know the risks. Professor Delova gives her a prescription to ease the discomfort. Is it hard for you to see patients like that? Like this? Yes, I mean, look at her. There's nothing we can do for her now. It's all damaged and she's... I ask her about the active ingredients in the creams that lighten skin. It's mercury, it's hydroquinone, it's phenol, and it's a steroid containing, corticosteroid containing creams. So when you lighten the skin, you're basically removing the melanin that is protective to your skin and prevents damage from ultraviolet rays and getting skin cancer. It's astonishing to her that people would risk cancer to be whiter. I just wanted you to take a look and just, you know, have you seen products like this and do they raise your suspicion? I show her the products Ms. Shoza's endorsing. It just says half cast white cream, I don't know what that means. And it doesn't say what it contains. So if you test these and then you find the bend compounds, then you can make a case for it. Even though it's after hours, she persuades her colleagues in the lab to test the product. We give samples of the cream to other reputable labs, and we're told we'll get the results in a few days. Meanwhile, I catch up with Jack. He wants to make it as a rapper, and today he and his friends are shooting a music video. He sees being a light skinned performer as a great way to get female fans. Girls, especially girls, they like rappers that are attractive. And attractive means light skin? Yeah, and by attractive, I mean light skin with a beard. <laughs> Jeff's already got 16,000 Instagram followers. All right. His friend Aura, a model, tells me she doesn't use skin bleaching creams, but understands why others do. People always go about yellow bones, you know, these lighter girls, and it's always appreciated or accepted or wanted. Like, you know, girls that are lighter are prettier. And there's U.S. influence. Beyonce describes herself as yellow bone in a single formation 
everyone's listening to. It's so sad because now all these other girls who are not light are going to try to go out there and do stuff like, you know, skin bleaching just to look lighter and, and be accepted and seen as beautiful. Jeff's beginning to open up more about why he wants to look lighter. He tells me he went to a private school where he was one of the only black kids. I kind of stood out a bit. I don't think for the right reasons at that time. So they would tease me, they comments every now and then, but you could feel that. It I would hurts. Yeah, just laugh along just to. So my friends also like had girlfriends and all that, and I didn't have a girlfriend. So, so I thought like maybe that was the reason why, because of because of my skin. Did they make racist comments? Yeah, since it's it's a uh, yeah they did every now and then. What would they say? Kaf was like a a word they used to use in apartheid, like they used to call black people kafirs. Kafir is an offensive racist term like the N-word. I think I just wanted to like fit in, in that group. I feel for Jack and the pressure he feels to look lighter. When I was younger, I too experienced racism and felt the pressure to use skin bleaching products. But some people are taking a stand against the light skin look and the values behind it. Matale Sofile describes herself as a beauty activist. She's styling a shoot for a new magazine that promotes a very different look. This is our studio, we're shooting. We're doing Zulu traditional hairstyles um, with our beautiful model there. We are trying to kind of normalize this sort of beauty that you can be that dark skinned and still be in the context of a beauty shoot. It's just normal and beautiful and um, Many black women in South Africa look like her. Sorry. <laughs> Matale thinks the skin bleaching trend is a sign that the races still aren't equal here. We have women who have been told for generations that they are not good enough, that their uh, skin color is not, is not attractive, that their hair texture is not attractive. Um, that it needs to be fixed. And the question is, how crazy is it that we live in a world where your life can be easier just based on how you look, just based on the color of your skin? It is definitely that legacy of apartheid, that white is better, white is more beautiful. White people are still in power because white people still own South Africa. They hold the economic power. And having a black government, great, but if they're not changing those rules and kind of empowering black people, we're always then going to be knocking on white man's door, looking for acceptance just so we can progress in life. I'm concerned Jeff's skin bleaching could be putting him in danger. I call Professor Lester Davids across the country in Cape Town, who's conducted tests on lemon bait, the cream Jeff uses. So, lemon bait is one of those creams that contain mercury. They also contain trace amounts of, of corticosteroids, which, are also, uh, which also have a negative effect on the skin. Wow, it turns out that the product Jeff is using is in fact really dangerous. He's putting mercury into his body. Mercury can harm the brain, heart, lungs, and immune system. With continued use, it could even lead to organ failure. Jeff goes through a bottle of lemon bait a month. I have to tell him. You know, the cream you're using is illegal to be sold as a cosmetic. Is it? Yeah. You know, it has very dangerous ingredients that can harm you. It has mercury. Mercury. 
I don't think I would stop using it. <laughs> no, at the moment, I don't think I would stop using it because you know, it's, it's really helping. You're still willing to use this cream? This is, if I knew the, like, the side effects and everything, I think I would have chosen like an alternative solution. I think that's a good point. I have to think about it. The manufacturers of Lemon Bait told us it does not contain any banned ingredients, that they do not distribute it in Africa, and what's available there are counterfeit copies. We've been sent a lab analysis of the skin cream that Mishoza is intending to endorse. It contains hydroquinone, the banned substance we keep hearing about, which lowers the melanin in the skin and increases the risk of skin cancer. It's been very difficult to get a hold of Mshoza. She finally answered her phone this morning, and now we're driving about three hours away from Joburg to go and meet with her and to discuss the results that we got from the lab. Ah, oh, shucks. I know it's hot. Flip. Oh, jeez. After bleaching her skin for so long, Mshoza finds direct sunlight painful. I'm burning. What is this, uh, oh. So I wanted to talk to you a bit about the product you were promoting. Do you know what ingredients were in that cream? <laughs> yeah, well, she, she did tell me. What's in it? I don't know. <laughs> we went to a lab and we tested the cream that you were promoting and we found some harmful ingredients in it. Like? Hydroquinone. Here, we're talking about the product you were endorsing. But it's not my product, I can't really comment But you were, in, you were endorsing it. And I stopped for such a reason. Hydroquinone is illegal in South Africa. It's banned to be sold as a cosmetic. It, there should be no hydroquinone in any product because it's yeah. dangerous and damaging to your health. Yeah, I, I apparently yes, uh, that is true. You said when we met with you that one time that you are all for women you know, young girls using products that are not harmful to their skin. I'm not to be blamed for anything that has to do with skin. Like, people do a lot of things. So I don't know if, uh, if it has hydroquinone, like you said, um, I can't be blamed for it. Look, it has a business transaction. A business transaction? We contacted Pearl, the manufacturer of this cream, with the lab results and she told us she no longer intends to put it on the market. After we left South Africa, Mishoza launched her own range of creams. She posted on social media, saying the new cream is making me look like a white woman. Her cream is on sale now. <laughs>